One of the many creationists posting on my discussion boards has accused me of hypocrisy, of having a double standard when it comes to integrity. Now, I've said many times that it is impossible to defend creationism honestly, and that is certainly true. Once sincere believers begin investigating the arguments on either side of this alleged controversy, they will very quickly face a life-altering choice, whether to remain honest or whether to remain creationist. Because there has still never been a single verifiably accurate argument of evidence indicative of miraculous creation over biological evolution or any other avenue of actual science. Not one still. Consequently, all their arguments fall into two categories only. Blind speculation, asserted as fact, but without any supportive evidence whatsoever, and which also can never be disproved. And erroneous claims, often repeated despite the knowledge that they have already been disproved. There is no third category. Consequently, all of their arguments are invariably dishonest, and I offered to prove that, and was given the specific example of Dr. Michael Behe's uh, sworn testimony in Kitzmiller versus Dover. That discussion turned into a video challenge. Behe was very specific and never claimed in his testimony that no scientific explanations exist, but that no detailed testable answers exist. Wrong. Behe did specifically say that no scientific explanations exist, but even if he didn't, there's no difference. In science, an explanation is defined as a detailed, testable answer, and a detailed, testable answer is known as an explanation. They're not two different things, they're the same thing. I pointed out how Behe denied that the scientific literature had any explanation for the evolution of the immune system, and that when one of the lawyers subsequently produced 58 peer-reviewed publications, nine books, and several immunology textbook chapters of exactly that, Behe simply dismissed them all out of hand, without a thought, as a knee-jerk reaction, as if they somehow didn't count just because he said so. I said that Behe described all these exceptions to his rule as not being good enough, and I put that in quotes with the reference that this was how the judge summarized his comments. That is accurate. But my accuser said that summary was a straw man because that wasn't the phrase Behe used when he said that. Behe said he assumed that all these articles shown to him were excellent and interesting, but he also assumed that they must address a different subject. Of course, since he apparently didn't know what any of them actually said, then he couldn't say what that subject was. But he had to conjure some excuse, otherwise he'd have to admit he was wrong. And you can't do that when you're the champion of absolute truth. So he essentially said, it's not that they're not good enough. It's just that they're not good enough. That is what he said, even if he used different words to say it. He then went on to add a new set of impossible standards such that nothing would ever be good enough. And just so you know, that's not a straw man. A straw man is a logical fallacy in which you attack a position your opponent doesn't actually hold. Like when creationists say that evolutionists wants you to believe we came from rocks, or that we believe everything came from nothing. Those are straw men, and the creationists using those arguments know that, but they keep reciting them anyway because they're dishonest. Be he didn't stop there either. He denied all evolutionary evidence across the board from zoology, biotech industries, agriculture, everywhere volumes more work he knew nothing about because he had already decided in advance that nothing would ever be good enough for him to change his mind. So he employed another logical fallacy commonly used by creationists, a tactic known as moving the goalposts, wherein one must muddy the waters by inaccurately redefining terms, which Behe did in the case of evolution, or by adding qualifiers of unspecified quantity such that the goal can never be met, because one can always add another criteria after the fact so that he can continue to reject every point ever presented on the excuse that it still isn't detailed or rigorous enough. Apparently, Behe only added all those other criteria to weasel out of admitting that his original comment was obviously proven wrong. Aaron also went on to say that the only honest answer Behe could have given was to say he hadn't read them and therefore could not have known if they met the criteria or not. How do you know he never read any of them? Because he said so. Behe stated openly and repeatedly that he hadn't read them. He even admitted on the stand that he'd effectively only Googled science articles for the phrase random mutation, and if those words didn't appear in any relevant title, then he assumed and confidently declared that no such content exists. A rather ironic statement coming from someone arguing for the existence of something for which there is no evidence. 
Then, once he was shown that these articles did exist, albeit with more appropriate titles, there was a point when he even gave what I already said was the only honest answer he could give, but then he went on weaseling. Once he realized this meant he would actually have to concede an error on behalf of creationism, something he is not permitted to do, then he boldly proclaimed his certainty that none of these works could actually be what they all said they were, and he made that judgment even though he didn't even know about most of them, and never indicated that he'd actually read any of them. Speaking of which, since you apparently haven't read the court transcripts yourself, why do you pretend as though you have, and ridicule me as though I had not? Instead, it seems the Discovery Institute spoon-fed this argument to you, and you swallowed it without looking. Then, in what seems to be an attempt to project your own faults onto me, you accused the judge of not having heard or considered the case, and you accused me of not having done so either, when we both obviously have, and you apparently have not. Remember, I'm not arguing for creation right now, but rather against the claim that creationists in general are liars. As I've said so many times before, most creationists are innocently deceived, indoctrinated sheep, and these can include honest people, so if they ever learn the truth, it might change their minds. I know because many of them email me when this happens. But those writing the propaganda are willfully ignorant and will still make believe even when they know they're wrong, and they keep repeating things they know have already been disproved. They assert as truth only those things which are not evidently true, and I'm sure that's why they claim gullibility as the ultimate, if not sole, saving grace. But the primary reason all creationist apologetics are inevitably inherently dishonest is they've all proudly proclaimed their doctrinal obligation to automatically ignore and thoughtlessly reject any and all contrary evidence that may ever come to light, and that's what Dr. Behe did. I guess it couldn't be possible they actually believed what they said. That's right, it's not really possible. Because if you already know that you have to lie in order to defend your truth, then you must obviously know that it can't really be the truth, now can it? I can show many quotes of evolutionist presuppositions to back up my claim. No, you can't. Though sadly, you seem to think you just did. Now, I know you have some other challenges for me, and I'll get to those later. But this needs to be addressed now. First of all, the mind quotations you showed me come from documents which disprove the straw man arguments that creationists insist on using. When these people pour through actual scientific literature to pull something out of context that they know is opposite of what was actually said, that's already blatantly dishonest right there. But of course it gets worse. Now, in another attempt to project your own faults onto me, you said that I believe my own garbage. But I don't share your desire to believe garbage. I only believe what can be objectively verified and consistently shown to be evidently accurate. For example, it is a fact that evolution happens, that biodiversity and complexity do increase, that both occur naturally only by evolutionary mechanisms and according to the laws of population genetics. It is a fact that alleles vary with increasing distinction in reproductive populations and that these are accelerated in genetically isolated groups. It is a fact that natural selection, sexual selection, and genetic drift have all been proven to have predictable effect in guiding this variance, both in the scientific literature and in practical application. It is a fact that significant beneficial mutations do occur and are inherited by descendant groups and that multiple independent sets of biological markers do exist which trace these lineages backwards over many generations. It is a fact that birds are a subset of dinosaurs in the same way that humans are a subset of apes, primates, and eutherian mammals, and vertebrate deuterostome animals. It is a fact that the collective genome of all animals has been traced to its most basal form through reverse sequencing, and that those forms are also indicated by comparative morphology, physiology, and embryological development, as well as through chronologically correct placement of successive stages revealed in the geologic column. It is a fact that everything on Earth has definite relatives either living nearby or evident in the fossil record, and that the fossil record holds hundreds of definitely transitional species, even according to the strictest definition of that term. It is a fact that both microevolution and macroevolution have been directly observed and documented dozens of times, both in the lab and in naturally controlled conditions in the field, and that these instances have all withstood critical analysis and peer review. It is also a fact that evolution is the only explanation of biodiversity with either evidentiary support or scientific validity, and that no would-be alternative notion has ever met even one of the criteria required of a theory. Despite the fact that creationists will lie about everything in this list, these are the facts of evolution, meaning that each of these points is demonstrably true and measurably accurate. Thus, it is a matter of knowledge rather than mere belief. 
and also faith, is neither required nor even permitted, being prohibited by the process of peer review. So what are the facts of creation? What aspect of, you, of your belief can you really say you know is true? Meaning, what can you actually show to be factual? I know what was in the beginning. You don't know. I know what was in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You don't know. I do. What can you honestly say you know about the supernatural, of God's, or how anything was created? Because I'm not the one with the double standard. You still fail to produce one scientist who lied uh, in promoting evolution over creationism, despite your many accusations, and you will never find an apologist who doesn't lie and hasn't lied when trying to promote creationism instead.